Hello everyone, and welcome to our video on course enrollment with advanced standing units and exemptions at the University of Ottawa. This presentation is a second part of the pre-enrollment presentation. So if you haven't watched the first part, you can head over to our enrollment support webpage to watch it. So what are advanced standing units? They're courses that you passed at another institution and that correspond to courses offered at the University of Ottawa. Usually it's 1,000 or 2,000 level courses or first and second year courses. They're credited when we evaluate your application for admission. Keep in mind that you can't receive advanced standing for more than half of the required units for your program. And finally, these advanced standing units won't count in your CGPA at the University of Ottawa. So who receives advanced standing? There are students from CIGEP that usually receive up to 30 units. There's college and university transfers that receive up to 60 units. The Head Start program, the International Baccalaureate, advanced placement students, and students from DC. Keep in mind that one course is usually three units. Now there's some exceptions to this. So students in engineering programs uh, will receive a maximum of 15 units in advanced standing. Students in nursing programs will receive a maximum of 18 units in advanced standing. So there are three types of advanced standing units. There's for specific courses, for general courses, and finally, exam. For specific courses, you will receive advanced standing um, for a specific course in a specific discipline and level. So it automatically shows as a past course in your student file. For example, Psychology 1102. For general advanced standing, it's for a course in a specific program, so for example, psychology, or for an optional course, so you'll see the code OPT for optional, at a specific level. So here we see level 1000, but not for a specific course. These would replace an optional or an elective course in your student file. So here are a few examples. There's psychology, um, a first year course, a 3000 level sociology course, and a 1000 level optional course. And finally, for exemptions, um, it's when a student already knows the majority of the course's content. So we give them permission to replace that course with another one that's worth the same number of units. It doesn't count for units or as a past course in the student's file. So for example, you would be exempted from Psychology 1101 and you could replace that course with three elective course units or one course. So being granted advanced standing has an impact on your course sequence. They do count as prerequisites. So if you receive advanced standing for a 1000 level course, um, you will be able to take the following course. The courses that you do receive in advanced standing and that are not mandatory for your program uh, will replace elective course units. Keep in mind that if you're admitted in second or third year, you might still have to complete some 1000 level courses, but this is normal. And finally, it requires changes to your course sequence if you do receive advanced standing. And we'll show this in an example. So how do you make changes to your course sequence? You compare your course sequence that you can find online to your offer of admission. In your offer of admission, you'll find the list of advanced standing units that you were granted. You can then strike out all the specific courses for which you received advanced standing in your course sequence. You can then strike out the optional and elective courses for general advanced standing that you received. Finally, you can strike out exemptions and add the equivalent number of units needed um, as elective courses. So here's an example of an offer of admission. You can see at the bottom the list of advanced standing courses that were granted to this student. 
Um, this CEGEP student was admitted in a philosophy program with 30 units in advanced standing. Um, so an economics course, two English courses, a history course, two philosophy courses, one psychology, one social science, one optional, and one sociology course. Uh, don't worry, you'll get used to um, what these codes mean um, as you move along in your discipline. Now here's the course sequence for uh, philosophy students that we can find online. So a good tip is just to use Google. You can write course sequences U Ottawa in the search bar and you should be able to find the course sequence that corresponds to your program. So in this example, we have the course sequence on the left um, and the list of advanced standing courses on the right. So we can go ahead and remove the English and philosophy courses from the first year courses as they were received in advanced standing. So we can cross them out. We can then take out one of the optional courses in philosophy. And then we can go ahead with four elective courses. And finally, we can head to the second year and take out one elective to replace the sociology that was received in advanced standing as well. Now, a few good tools uh, that you can use to create your personalized course sequence. The first one is the course catalog. So you can search directly for different courses um, to see if they have prerequisites. So the first course we search does not have any prerequisites, whereas the second one we've highlighted in red um, the prerequisites that you would need to complete before enrolling into this class. The second tool is the timetable tool that you can find online as well. So here's the home page, um, and then you could simply click on the launch the class search tool button, and it would bring you to this page. So for example, here, if we wanted to search for a philosophy course, we would enter PHI, followed by the number in the course code, And then we could select to show open classes only and click search at the bottom. And then it would bring us the list of possible schedules for this class. So we would see that for this one in particular, there's only one section with a discussion group as well. So you can use these tools when you're looking for a course's prerequisite with the UOttawa catalog. When you're checking if a specific course is offered during the term you are enrolling for, that's with the online course timetable, or if you're checking a course's schedule with the online course timetable, if you want to know what day and time it's offered. So if we go back to the course sequence that we were working with, um, we can see that during the fall term, the student would enroll to philosophy 2170, 2380, 2382, as well as one optional course in philosophy and one elective course. For the winter term, they would enroll in philosophy 2174, 2183, 2383, and two electives. So all we did here was bring the three optional course units in philosophy from the winter term of the first year and added it to the fall of the second year. So from this point on, this student could simply follow the rest of the course sequence um, as it's shown here. So a few tips. When you enroll to courses, try to respect the order uh, that's found in your course sequence. So start with your mandatory courses, go on to your optional courses, and finally electives. This just makes sure that you have um, the proper space in your schedule to enroll to your mandatory courses before going on to the next ones. Before you start enrolling, you can create a few different sample schedules. Um, that way, if you start enrolling and you see that a specific course section is full, you have a plan B. 
And finally, if you have any questions, you can contact your regional mentor. Um, they're really there to help, so don't hesitate to contact them. You can head over to their webpage um, and you'll find their contact information at the bottom. You can always send them an email at mentors at uottawa.ca. Thank you for listening.